Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager for the Giant Diffraction Facility located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. This video will cover how to use HiScore Plus to determine phase quantification using Rietveld refinement. I have a number of other videos that show and explain how to use HiScore Plus for different purposes, such as phase identification and the determination of crystallite size and microstrain, and the links for these videos can be found in the description below. If you are unfamiliar with HiScore Plus, it may be a good idea to stop this video, watch the phase identification video first, and then return to this one. What is currently on the screen is where we left off in our phase identification video. So the next step is to go to Pattern List and select each of the patterns that you want to convert to a phase. We can do this a couple of different ways. You can left click here, hit Control A on the keyboard, and that will select all of your patterns. Or you can left click on one pattern, hit shift on the keyboard and hold it, and then left click on other patterns. We will then right click, convert pattern to phase, and we see that for the manganese oxide we have a 100%, but there's no number next to quartz. That's because this manganese oxide pattern has the necessary structural information in it to perform this type of analysis. And we can see that information here. If we go back to quartz, double click, scroll down, we see that it is missing that structural information. If this happens to you, it's not a big deal, it's an easy fix. You just need to go to refinement control, right click on the phase that is missing that structural information, and delete that phase. Go back to pattern list, left click and drag that phase down, or that pattern and then choose a pattern that does have that structural information in it, as shown here. Left click, drag up, right click, convert pattern to phase. Now we see that we do have two sets of numbers here, but don't get too excited. These are not the final values because you did not actually perform a Rietveld refinement yet. If we want to perform a refinement, we can go to refinement control and set some variables first. We see here that we have global variables such as specimen displacement and background. We have phase variables such as unit cell, profile variables. You can even go through and set each of these to refine manually, but we will not do that here. We are going to stick with automatic refinements to keep things simple. I do like to start out by left clicking on global variables and setting the solver tolerance to something a little bit uh, more demanding. I'll add two zeros. This can improve your results, but it works best if you have relatively simple patterns, such as the one shown here. We have sharp peaks and not a whole lot of peak overlap. I have had some situations with more complex patterns where setting the solver tolerance um, actually resulted in some errors, so you might want to just leave it at the default setting. I will also calculate errors. I will go to my phase and left click, scroll down, and I will set an asymmetry function to split width and shape. If your peaks are a little bit asymmetric in shape, then this will help uh, fit those better during the refinement. I will not perform a size strain analysis because I know the crystallites in this sample are too large to make this analysis accurate. I will left click on quartz, also set the asymmetry. Now I need to make sure that I am in automatic mode, not manual, but automatic. And then if I left click here, I see a list of the parameter sets available to me. Now a parameter set is basically just a refinement strategy and some of these you will likely have in your software, some of them you won't because I customized some of these myself. If you would like to learn how to customize these sets, click the link in the description below for the tutorial. But I like to use this expanded Rietfeld uh, parameter set, so I will left click that. Come down here and right click, show graphics and difference plot. Here you see each step of the refinement parameter or the refinement strategy. And here we see the difference plot, which is the difference between the blue calculated curve and the red data curve. And as the refinement continues, hopefully your difference is getting better. 
and your RWP should hopefully be getting smaller as well. Smaller is better. I will just let it continue on and do its thing. We are getting close to the end. And it's now done refining. We see the results here, 50.3% quartz, 49.7% manganese oxide. Here we have the estimated standard deviation, so that is plus or minus on this last uh, integer. So this would be 50.3% plus and minus 0.3%. This would be 49.7 plus and minus 0.3%. Uh, now there are some options to change the way that this all looks. We can change, if we click on, if we left click here, we can change the title. So for this we could set it to MNO2. And that changes it in the legend. We can change the color of our curves if we like uh, to whatever we want in this list, say fuchsia, and we see it change here. We can even change the placement of this legend if we right click, document settings, legends and grids. We can set it to left, center, or right. Let's just try center, and that's how it looks. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this kind of automatic processing can be very helpful and quick, but you need to be careful using it. It worked out very well in this instance because the peaks are sharp and have minimal overlap. I used the same automatic parameter set for a more complicated cement sample that was likely partially amorphous and the refinement incorrectly fit some of the phases. I could tell it was incorrectly fit by comparing the blue calculated line to the red data line. You also need to keep in mind that a low error value, as shown here, does not mean or does not guarantee that your results are correct. Your blue calculated curve and red data curve can agree well, but software routines can refine parameters to values that do not make physical sense in the real world just to improve the fit. Another way that I could tell that some phases in my more complicated cement sample were incorrectly refined was by checking the lattice parameters. In this case, I would just go here, click the plus button, unit cell, and I could see the lattice parameters. So for that more complicated pattern, I noticed that in, this, in the phases that I suspected were incorrect, I noticed that the software changed the lattice parameters by an excessively large amount. So to reiterate, don't believe the results just because it's a low error value. You need to visually check them to make sure that they are correct. That's pretty much it for this video. As a reminder, if you would like to learn more about using Highscore Plus, links to my other tutorials can be found in the description below. If you would like to learn more about our facility, the link to our website can also be found in the description below and at the top right of the video screen. Finally, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments section. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.